Ah. Good morning, everybody. Afternoon, evening, wherever you are in this world. Uh, thanks so much for coming. I am, listen, you know that Mercury is going retrograde on April 1st. I know I have, I've just, I'm mentioning this now because Mercury's in shadow. I know, uh, if, if, so basically, Mercury enters shadow period before Mercury actually goes officially retrograde. So you feel the effects of Mercury uh, being the trickster that Mercury is. So I'm just letting you know now because I ordered a bagel an hour ago and it hasn't arrived. And I just got the notification that it's coming right now. So I got to get that at some point. You're going to see me get up in my sweatpants. Um, y'all, how are y'all doing? Happy, uh, happy Sunday. Happy uh, everything. Happy uh, Venus sextiling Jupiter today. It should be a really great day. And you know, remember if if you if if you uh, heard uh, saw your reading about that week, it, luck, right? Jupiter's all about luck. It's just some really great things. And this morning, I woke up. So the for my full time job, my, the company that I work for, we got. At a big award today. We just got the news today for something that we've been working on for a few months. So that really, uh, you know, set the course for my day. So I was really excited about that. But that's like a Venus uh, sextile Jupiter moment. Um, and so I've just been on, I, I know I'm eating, I haven't even eaten all day. It's been a, a, a wild day. So you're probably already feeling a little bit of Mercury retrograde stuff happening. You're probably also feeling a little bit of that Venus conjuncting Saturn that made things a little bit uh, uh, for the past few days. Could have been a lot of responsibilities you've been taking on. You could have felt a little bit of a squeeze. Uh, but hey, we're here. We're here. Oh, and we have the uh, lunar eclipse tomorrow, y'all. What a week. I mean, there's so much happening. And for April 2024, I'm just going to tell you now, this is the biggest month of 2024, okay? Your lives are changing. Your lives are changing. Uh, big time, big time. April 20, I'm excited to tell you what's going on. And I'm I, again, I'm going to try to keep it to uh, just a couple things. I don't want to ruin everything. I'm almost done with your April forecast. Of course, they are so long. They're probably the longest uh, because there's so much happening in April. Um, and it is uh, perhaps the, well, I would say arguably, but I would actually say unarguably the most significant month of 2024. There's a lot happening in April. There's a lot happening in April. Uh, and then it moves into, just to give you a heads up, if, if, if you're forecasting here, May happens to be the best month of 2024. May and June. May is so sweet. May is so nice. There's so many great aspects. Even the luckiest day of the year happens to be in May 2024. We got Jupiter changes. There's so much happening there. Just to give you a little uh, idea of uh, what's going on. Hello, everybody. Good morning, Jean and Karen and Michelle Maha. Y'all, um, okay, so how's everybody doing? Everyone cool? Everyone good? I'm sorry. I'm eating nuts right now. I, when I say I haven't eaten all day, I haven't eaten all day. Um, we're okay. So what y'all want to talk about the lunar eclipse for a second tomorrow? It's actually, some of y'all going to feel it now. I mean, you're feel you've been feeling it. You've been feeling it. I mean, it's a big, big full moon lunar eclipse. As you know, some things are ending. There's parts of you that you're just like, okay, I want to and this part of my life, you're thinking about ending things possibly, uh, but in a good way. Remember, it's a good one. I like, I, I love this lunar eclipse. Um, it should be very cathartic. It should be very nice. Uh, it is happening tomorrow, but it's happening. You, but technically tomorrow, right? What is it? Three a.m. is uh, when it's happening tomorrow morning, if Eastern Standard Time. And so, what is that like? If you're in LA, or if you're on the West Coast, that's around midnight tonight. But uh, yeah, so I would just say today, tomorrow, it just, you know, really depends on where you live. Uh, but it is going to be a big one. It's going to be a big one. And you'll feel it. You'll feel it. Uh, so I want to hear if if anyone's already um, feeling that, you know, with the full moon lunar eclipse. 
uh, happening in Libra. Remember all about balance and it, you know karma. It just it's it, I, I talk about it uh, in your readings that I just posted. Um, but yeah, I just expect that. Um, and then April, you ready? You ready to talk about April? Who's ready to talk about April? Nobody. Out. Let me let me get started. Um, again, <laughs> I'm gonna try to. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to try to do it in a way where I don't repeat a lot of things that I say. I'm going to tell you the best days. I want you to look out for. There are challenge, uh, yep, challenging days in April as well. And so the the three big things in April, the three biggest things of all, on April 1st, okay, right away, Mercury goes retrograde. Now, I talked about this in your March forecast, I think. Mercury is in Aries. It's going retrograde April 1st to April 25th. It will then stay in Aries until May 15th. And so it's already entered its shadow period, meaning, again, without getting too esoteric here, you're probably already feeling moments of Mercury retrograde. You're probably even feeling, uh, you know, Mercury retrograde, it, the mishaps, right? The mishaps, the miscommunication, the being late, the fact that I was like 10 minutes late to my brunch yesterday because it was pouring outside and Ruby couldn't walk and I couldn't even answer my phone. I had her in one arm, the umbrella in the other. Everyone's calling. They're like, where are you? Where are you? Those things, okay? <laughs> um, Mercury retrogrades also when people from the past show up. So I met up with friends I haven't seen in years. Um, so you're probably going to start experiencing Mercury retrograde moments. Now, technology, okay? A lot of uh, technology things may happen, may be some issues with technology. Um, just keep cool, keep cool. And know that these things are going to happen. Now, Mercury going retrograde April 1st in Aries. I I talk about this in your monthly forecast. Again, I'm almost said I'm going to post them on Wednesday. Um, I like it, and I want you to take advantage of it, even though it will bring those, you know, moments that Mercury retrograde is known for. April is such a fiery month. There's so much happening in April. It's like, go, 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 speed racer, go. You're going to actually appreciate Mercury retrograde. You're going to feel it too. You're going to be reassessing a lot of things in your life. That's what, Merc you know, one of the benefits of Mercury retrograde is that you get that time to rethink things. Even going back to things that you were working on, big projects that you're working on that maybe you got too busy to uh, finish or, you know, uh, life threw you some curveballs. So if you were, uh, you know, working on something, maybe you were, building a house and then it just, you know, rained for four months straight or, you know, and now it's like, Hey, the sun's out. I can go back to the house I was building, you know, things like that. You, you, you may go back to old projects, pick them up again. Um, Mercury is, you know, rules communication. So a lot of it's going to be communication related people from the past or it's, and it's going to affect every sign differently, Mercury retrograde. But what I'm saying now is for everybody, you know, it's for the collective, just Mercury retrograde. Uh, so that's happening April 1st. So that is uh, going to be a really big deal because um, April 4th, any Aries here, by the way? Are there any Aries here? Aries, it's your month. You know that, right? Well, it's a month for everyone. Everyone's going to feel a lot of a lot of shifts. But uh, April, 4th, April 4th is when Venus moves into Aries. And so this is the planet of love relationships, money, creativity, beauty, moving into a fiery, fiery sign, okay? Now, why is this such a big deal? Is because Venus is actually detriment in Aries. It's, it's, and don't think of it as a bad thing. It's just, it's, some of y'all, it's just going to be like really fired up, amped up energy. You could feel energetic. You could feel like there's like, things you want to say you're going to feel that energy okay uh in 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 those areas of your life um now the key thing about this and why i'm going to, and i why focus on this a little bit in your readings venus is in aries while mercury's retrograde in aries so remember how i just said people from your past will be coming back 
Now we're talking about Venus and Aries too. So a lot of former lovers could be sliding in your DMs, okay? They could be knocking on your door saying, hey, I've traveled all the way from uh, Tampa, Florida to see ya. Here's here's uh you know a box of uh of uh uh pixie sticks whatever you like. Um anyway, what might happen? Has there, there any, any any that happened for any of y'all? Um <laughs> already. I'm just letting you know. I'm just letting you know. Now, another thing that I make a, a, I want you to know. We have a full moon lunar eclipse tomorrow. It is going to affect everybody differently. Okay? It's definitely going to affect everybody differently. It is in Libra, okay? So uh, every sign is going to feel that. Um, and what's really interesting is that um, what's really interesting for me, because I'm an Aquarius, so this full moon, lunar eclipse in Libra affects my ninth house, right? But the mean being Gemini rising, it's my fifth house. Ninth house, you know, travel related, right? And then, uh, you know, uh, fifth house, family and, and and whatnot. And so I'm actually going to see my family this week during the full moon lunar eclipse. So it's really interesting. Um, this is all about we. Libra is the we, right, of the zodiac. So it's, you know, very partnerships, relationships as well. That could be a big thing for you. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up, because Aries is the I am of the zodiac, okay? And so... There's going to be a lot of you putting your foot down, putting yourself first and do it, do it. Okay. Do it. There's going to be, you know, we have the new moon solar eclipse in Aries on April 8th. All right. It's a total solar eclipse. By that point, we've got the North node. We've got the sun. We got Venus. We got Mercury. We, I mean, we got so much happening in Aries. And again, everyone's going to be affected differently, you know, as part of, oh, there goes my, um, uh, my, um, ah, uh, gosh. Um, uh, okay. I think he just left it in the doorway. Okay. That's fine. Uh, my bagel, <laughs> <coughs> excuse me. So do you, do you see how this is going to be a big, big month already with all this Aries energy? It's really, really fiery. That new moons, uh, total solar eclipse in Aries, by the way. Oh, that's big. Anyone starting anything new? I mean, you see what's happening here. Libra, part of the south node, letting things go, right? Letting things go. The end of something, culmination of something, making room for this uh, new moon, total solar eclipse, new beginnings. It's a big thing. It's a big thing. Lives are changing. Lives are changing. Anyone having any big life-changing moments? Especially Aries. Actually, one of my friends who I met up with yesterday, what's, re what's really great about, you know, when I say, like, your life has changed, your life has changed. She is an Aries. She is an Aries, and she just got her dream job. And she actually starts on the day of the eclipse, which is crazy. And she's had big, you know, Aries have just been, they've been going through it. They've been going through it. Um, anyone having any big changes? Oh, hey, y'all. <laughs> Hello, Jen Marie. Finally did make it to a live stream. Um, so remember, now is a good time to reassess what you want, rethink things, but eclipses are game changers. Y'all, your lives are going to change. Eclipses are, are major game changers. This is a powerful new moon, total solar eclipse. It's going to be really big. And if you live in the U.S., I hope you go see it. You know, and when I say that, and I talked about that in your in your readings too, just very briefly, like if you live in North America, um, you know, it's going through Mexico, the U.S. You've seen the news. Have you not seen the news about this eclipse? Stores are shutting down. Um, uh, schools are closing that day on the 8th. This is a big one. You have to go see it. You have to, well, I'm talking about the ones in the path of the eclipse, okay? So it's going through like Texas, uh, up through even New York, and I'll be here. I mean, you know, where it's going through New York, the path of the eclipse is about five hours away from me. So, you know, I, if you've been trying to get a spot somewhere within the path of the eclipse, you'll notice that the hotels are 10 times the rate. <laughs> They're all sold out. 
nowhere to stay. Airbnbs. If you own an Airbnb in the path of the eclipse, you're probably a millionaire by now. Everyone's going to the path of the eclipse. Okay. So, um, and I'm going to, I'm going to try my hardest because it is a Monday. I've got work. I, it's just like a whole thing, but, um, if you're not in the path of the eclipse, yeah, you'll still see a little, like a ton, like barely, barely. You have to be in the path of the eclipse for that totality, okay? For that totality. And, you know, I did a video, I'll put up a reel, I, I, I'll i put it on my Instagram, okay? I, uh, I'll i put up a, a video. I went to Nashville with a friend for the last total solar eclipse we had in America was in 2017. And so my friend and I, we went, we were able to get a a room in Nashville and I filmed it and it is just so crazy cool. It's so cool. It's so cool to watch. I'll put it on my Instagram. I'll I'll do like a little reel and I'll pin it so you can see it. Um, But because I filmed it and you'll see we're on like a rooftop with like a pool and there's tons of people there and you'll see how day turns into night. It was at like 1 p.m. or whatever. Everything just goes dark. It's really interesting anyway enough about that but just go see it okay just know this is a very like even trailblazing eclipse like this is like amped up energy okay any questions so far about the eclipses (laughs) um michelle you're ready for a big month um Hey, Jeanette, good to see you. Okay, so everyone, it's to you, Jen Marie, good that you re- reassessing things. Um, there's uh, the solar eclipse, concerns about travel during it. Oh, yeah, there's gonna be a lot of traffic on the road. So that's why you have, it's just like, you have to remember, Mercury will be retrograde during the eclipse. So keep that in mind if you are traveling. There, I would I would triple plan everything. Triple plan everything. It's going to be, it's, it's going to be an interesting time. It's going to be interesting time, but I, I would, uh, assume there's going to be a lot of traffic, uh, like highway traffic as well. Um, okay. So we're going to, okay. So y'all, y'all. All All right. So, um, what else? Oh, um, I try to talk about Chiron. I don't know how, I, I mean, I, I talk about Chiron, like if you've got a private reading with me, you know that um, I talk about Chiron, like looking at your birth chart. Chiron is like the wounded healer. Um, I'm not, I don't really talk too much about Chiron. I already, I know that I, I already throw a lot of astrology at you. This is a heat. There's a sense of like healing. Okay. The Chiron, like when I say the wounded healer, there's something in, in 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 Aries too. Okay, so whatever Aries represents in your what house. Okay, pay attention to what house it represents for what sign you are. But there's a sense of healing there as well. Okay, with this eclipse. Um, and then I'm just reading. I'm reading my notes. So that's just a big day. Mark it in your calendar, April eighth. It's just so big. Just re- just think about like what what's been happening, right? The major conjunctions we had in February. We had Pluto changing signs. So you really felt that. Um, we had the Saturn Kazemi. What was that? Just uh, you know, a month ago we had uh, you know the equinox, Sun moving into Aries. I, like think about all these big changes moving you forward, like pushing you. Okay, it's 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 a big thing. So there's a lot of energy in April lot of a lot of energy and again i just don't want to repeat a lot of the things that um i say um in your readings that i'll post on wednesday which by the way y'all this this is the week y'all this is my this is my two-year anniversary of this channel this week isn't that crazy oh my goodness that's a big milestone um and it's so funny because, you know, I hope everyone takes notes. I, I think I mentioned in a live stream, I take notes. I write down what I do every day. So I, I can always look back to, I can go back to 2009. I know like who I saw a movie with, the phone calls I made, you know, that I had that day, like whatever it is. Um, and it's just a weird quirky thing that I do. But um, we had the eclipse in Aries just a few weeks after uh 
in 2020, is it 2023? Um, when things just got really, when Jupiter also moved into air, it was like, it was like, everything was like Aries related. And that's for me, like communication. Anyway. Um, okay. Let's keep going. Um, okay. So I'm going to tell you about, I'm just going to go in order. I know I usually talk about like all the good days first and then the challenging days. I, I really want you to know this because this is happening two days after the eclipse. Mars will conjunct Saturn. Y'all. I talked about this in your readings. I said they're getting closer and closer and closer. They're they're and they're the two malefic planets. So there is going to be something that might test you on the 10th, okay? This is, you know, this is Mars and Saturn here. Mars is all you know Mars is very competitive and you know can be aggressive, can be conflicty. Um remember Mars is the ruler for Aries. And where did Aries come from? Aries, the god of war. And then there's Saturn. It's all about limitations and restrictions. It makes you work hard to earn, you know, uh, uh, what you're what you're striving for. Um, and so they're gonna, they're yeah, they're gonna do a big fist bump in this. In they're gonna do a big fist bump this day. Uh, so there is a. So just be mindful. There may be a big squeeze. So this is a day where, uh, remember I said that Mercury retrograde is going to be really nice for you to reassess things. So this is a good time where you, it may be like something happens or you feel a big squeeze and you're just like, okay, I really have to rethink this. I really have to uh, 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 see this at a new angle. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> um Oh, Jen Marie, you're going to be in Chicago land. Oh, wait. It'll be covered, the, the eclipse. Um, I'm very curious as to what uh, message Michelle retracted. <laughs> that's, a, that's a Mercury retrograde, Mercury and shadow moment. Um, yes, Jen Marie, the comet uh, should be visible during the eclipse. Tonley wrote about that having a huge impact to y'all. We can go into the history of this. It's going to be, uh, but yeah, but, but I, okay. So let me, you know, I can talk. So, okay. So you know that now on the 19th, happy birthday, Taurus, happy birthday. Well, happy birthday, all Aries right now. Happy birthday, all Aries right now. I hope you love the big changes that are happening in your lives. Okay. There's big changes and you could have started feeling them. Uh, you know, as early as, uh, you know, even last year there, listen, there's, there's been a lot happening for Aries, but happy birthday Aries. And now on April 19th, we officially move into Taurus season. There are three big things happening on that day, which I talk about in your reading. So be prepared. It's a great day. Okay. Especially for Tauruses. It's your time, your time to shine. You've waited so long for this moment. Oh my goodness, because we're now about to talk about April 20th. And this is for everybody. Everybody, April 20th. I'm going to give you some time to mark it in your calendar now. Okay? I'm going to give you some... Thank, thank you for the happy anniversary messages. Y'all, I'm going to give you some time to mark it in your calendar. April 20th, the biggest day of the year. Now, this is... You will hear a lot of people say this is... And people have been talking about this day since last year. Okay, even the two years before. This is Jupiter conjuncting Uranus, which hasn't happened in over a decade. And this is the planet of luck, good fortune, prosperity, expansion, profit, right? Conjuncting Uranus, the planet of breakthroughs and surprises. So will this be a big day? Yes, this is an absolutely mind-blowing, huge day where there's... Uh, you could receive some unexpected, surprising opportunities, news, breakthroughs around this time, just kind of out of nowhere. A lot of like being at the right place at the right time kind of situations to really, really good, surprising news. This is going to be a day I want you to be aware of, okay? I want you to be aware that this conjunction is happening this day, okay? Put yourself out there. Put your energies out there. I want you to really feel this, okay? And remember, conjunctions are just really very powerful aspects. Out of all the aspects, it's just like, whoosh, it's huge. It's huge. Um, 
Yeah, so keep that in mind. It's going to be, and it could go any which way. Like, listen, it's happening in Taurus, the finance sign. So, yeah, is money a big thing here? Sure. Is there, um, listen, I never really promote this, but a lot of y'all do leave comments on this. Um, yeah, is this a good day to play lottery? Of course it is. Of course it is. Um, but I'm not telling, I'm not saying that you're going to win anything. I'm just saying that it is better than a day that, where Jupiter is not conjuncting Uranus, okay? That's all I'm saying. And I'm out, because a lot of y'all y'all leave messages on that. That's why I'm I'm saying it. But there could be uh uh if remember Jupiter is also faith too. So a lot of just like oh really nice comfort. Um especially with uh, this is happening in Taurus. So of course Taurus is gonna feel this the most, but everyone's gonna feel this. Everyone's gonna feel this this day. So definitely keep this day in mind. Okay, mark it in your calendar. Has everybody marked it in their calendars? Sorry, I'm eating raisins here. Um, okay, let me see some of y'all's messages. Y'all, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, Jen Marie, you say you're praying something good happens from that Mars Saturn conjunction. Your Scorpio sun and rising. Saturn also conjuncting your Pisces moon. Look at you go. Look at you go. Um, you're double Scorpio. Wow. Wow. Um, one of my friends that that I met up with yesterday was Scorpio. Scor I mean, like, listen, this is okay. So if you're double Scorpio, um you you know that you should shift that energy that you're saying now from the Mars Saturn conjunction to the Jupiter to the Jupiter Uranus conjunction in your seventh house of partnerships and relationships. But yeah, the Mars Saturn conjunction for Scorpios, that is your fifth house. That is your fifth house. Mars and Saturn are in Pisces, okay? And when that happens on, on April 10th. And so that's uh yeah, that's uh so you may feel like a big squeeze there. Um just be cool. Be cool. You got this. You got this. Put on your, uh, you know, put a, put on, put on like a really cool beret that day. Just own that day. <laughs> and fifth house is pleasure, as you know. It's such a. I love the fifth house. And it's love and its relationships, its creativity, and it's gonna affect everybody differently. It's gonna, you know, it's gonna affect everybody differently. Um, and I say that every, all the time, you know, everyone, obviously you have a very different chart from anyone else that's a Scorpio in, in, in here. So, um, it really could be like, what did I say? I said something. I'll leave it. You, I'll, I'll leave it in the readings, but I, I talk about it more in the readings. Okay. Okay. So. Oh, Jeanette, you're like, well, see, you're like, what day is this for? It's the tw April 20th. Mark it in your calendar now. Oh, mark it in your calendar. It's such a, it's going it, it, to, it, there's a lot happening there. Um, And then May, oh, I'll wait for, I'm going to wait until our, our live stream um, next month to tell you about what's going on in May. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It's so good. Now, another day that I want you to watch out for. Okay, so, and 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 Jen Marie, I want you especially to pay attention to this if you're a Scorpio. On April twenty third, we have a full moon in Scorpio. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. And this one is very emotional. This one's very emotional. Okay, it's gonna be. I I would love. For everybody uh, around this time, remember these aspects. It's just the peak. It's just when it's happening. So you may be feeling the effects of the full moon in Scorpio a few days before, a few days after. It's going to be emotional, and and I do talk about it. Remember, full moons culminate. There's something ending. There's something coming to an end, and it could be a little oh okay because at this point we have the sun in Taurus, right? We have uh uh uh, uh the moon in Scorpio. Okay, two fixed signs. They're going to be squaring Pluto and Aquarius. Another fixed sign. So it's going to you. It's going to like you're going to have a little wiggle room, but it it's asking you to really go deep 
and explore your emotions. So just know this full moon in Scorpio could be very emotional for you, but it depends on how you handle things, you know, uh, it, and you just never know. I mean, every, again, as I mentioned, everyone has a different birth chart. Everyone is affected differently by these aspects. It could be the tiniest thing. It could be the littlest thing that just you're, you know, you find ants in your, you know, bathtub and you're just like, oh, and that just kind of sets things off. And then you start <laughs> spiraling. Um, just be cool. Just be cool. Okay. Have your stingers in, Jen Marie. Have your stingers in, the Scorpios. Oh, I love my Scorpios. Um, I love all y'all. I love all y'all. Um, okay. So, and don't forget in your forecasts or your readings, Every single every single video, every single sign, I do leave the key aspects in the description box. And also, don't forget, because I still also get messages about this. If you don't want to hear the astrology part, what I in the beginning, I have the timestamps in the description box and the first comment for every video. So you can just go straight to the tarot reading if you want to do that too. Okay. Um Okay, so now let's break it down. Who wants to hear? Who wants to hear? Am I here for love? Anyone here for love and relationships? Okay, well, I'll tell you. The dates to pay to pay attention to when you could feel on cloud ninety nine. Okay. April 3rd, Venus conjuncting Neptune. And April 6th, Venus sextiling Pluto. Those are really, really great days for love, for romance. It's like soulmate energy. It's like this depth of love that you feel. It's so, so nice, okay? So put yourself out there. If you're single, put yourself out there. But this is really, you know, and if you're not here for love, I, I mean, this is a lot of... Uh, empowerment energy well you know venus sexing pluto a lot of empowerment energy but then venus conjuncting neptune on april 3rd um oh my goodness the creativity that you're gonna feel that day it's like one of those daydreamy days it's so so nice so this is the first week okay this is the first week april 3rd to the 6th i would just pay attention because remember april 4th venus moves into aries so things get fired up so it could be like a big day, big week for for a lot of y'all in terms of love and relationships and soulmates and whatnot. Also, I also forgot to mention, and this is me recording during Mercury Retro. And I've already, if you're a Sagittarius, you know that I already made a big boo-boo in, in the video um, <laughs> that I made for y'all. I had to redo it. But oh my goodness, Mercury Retrograde or Mercury Shadow. Um, another thing that... that I should address is that I think all of y'all know that I, I I work full time and I do this on the side because I love doing this. I love, I absolutely love it. Um, but because of that, I only have time to do 12 signs a week. And so because your monthly forecasts are so long and it, I only do have time to do 12 signs a week. I skip the first week of every month and I talk more about it, not only here, but in your monthly forecasts, okay? If, if there are any key aspects in the first week, like you know that I will always bring it up. But just so you know, because I know that the, some people are, because I still get a lot of like, what I can't find the first week's reading and and whatnot. So there will not be a, 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 a weekly reading for, you know, April 1st to the 7th. And so again, and talk more about it here and in your monthly forecast. Um, but yeah, so 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 mark, and that's why I say mark these dates down too, just so you know, and so they pop up in your notifications. It's always just good to know, um, and you can even use emojis, like for instance, with you know April third, if you put it as a notification, Venus conjunct Neptune, just do a heart next to it, so you know it's like a big like love day. Um, okay, so. Okay, any questions so far, y'all? Any? <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm looking at my, I barely, I'm looking at the cam, like my camera now, and I don't even know if, there we go. Let me put that up a little bit more. All right, there we go. Any questions? All 
Oh, Michelle, you're an Aries sun and Venus. You're gonna, ooh, you're gonna be fired up. You're gonna be fired up. Um, okay. Another day that I want you to note, and again, I'm just trying not to give you all the days because I want you to, you know, in the readings, why don't that I make so why don't I tell you a little bit about the last of the month, okay? Because this is gonna be very influential for May. So on April 29th, Venus moves into Taurus. The day after Mars moves into Aries. And so now you have the, these two inner planets that have that are very influential moving into their home signs where they feel comfortable. They're at home. So Venus, you know, it is in its domicile in Taurus. Venus rules Taurus. And Mars is in its domicile in Aries. So, wow. When I talk about, and Venus in, in Taurus is like, it's like love. It's love, money, comfort. It, I mean, it's basically the Empress card. It basically, it's like magical. It's magical. Um, and so, yeah. So you're going to feel a lot of that in May. While all these amazing aspects are happening in May. But just keep that in mind. Um, there is going to be another day. There's two squares, April 21st, the Sun squaring Pluto, and then April 30th, Venus squaring Pluto. That, again, I just want to address now because that's toward the end of the month. Just know these are also days where you may feel like a little bit of a squeeze, okay? You may feel a bit of a squeeze. Pluto is the planet. When it's in aspects like this, you know, it's asking you, are you going to fear me? Or are you going to own me? You want to own, you want to own Pluto. Um, Jen Marie, you said the eclipses eclipse the first week's readings anyway. That's so funny. Y'all, um, okay, so those are the those are the days. Again, there's a lot more happening. There's a lot more happening, but I really want you to just know that April is going to be a pretty big month. It's going to be a pretty big month. Um, and we're already in, you know, we went, we were already in this new cycle, you know, having moved into the equal, you know, the spring equinox fall in the Southern hemisphere, uh, new season, but it's a, it's just a brand new cycle. It's it's the new year. It's the astrological new year that started just a few days ago. All right, so new beginnings, new beginnings for all. Jen Marie asks, "What you're saying is mm, is that May? May? Yeah, May more chill. Oh yeah." Oh, yeah, 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 big time, big time. And then so is June. So is June. It, it, there's, yeah. Um, and then there is, you know, we do have a lunar eclipse in Pisces in the fall. Um, and then another eclipse in Libra that will be a solar eclipse on October 2nd. Um, just remember the south node is in... Um, the nodes are in Aries and Libra, so a lot of focus there right now throughout the year. They're changing, okay? They're changing to Virgo Pisces, which is why you see the lunar eclipse already happening in Pisces at the end of this year. You're going to see more of Virgo Pisces. Uh, and again, we'll talk about that next year. <laughs> we'll talk about that next year. Y'all, anyone have any questions? Um, I'm about, let's do, let's focus on this lunar eclipse. Okay. Anybody got any questions here, um, for what's going on? Specific questions. Yes or no questions. I'll do a little bit of this for y'all. Okay. Y'all I'll just do a quick, quick, quickie, quick, quick quickies. Uh, think about some questions where it'll be, uh, I'll just do like a three. I'll do a three card spread. Um, Okay, so Karen, hello, Karen. Oh, you're Scorpio Leo rising. What is going on with you? Oh, wow. So you got a lot going on. Okay, so are there any Leo aspects that help me out in April? Speaking of Leo, think about the total eclipse in, in 
the total solar eclipse that we had in April, uh, was it August 2017? That was in Leo. That was in Leo. Um, okay, so um, are there any Leo aspects that helped me out in April? Um, if you can ask a more specific question <laughs> that has to do with, uh, I can even do, so I can do yes, no, um, past, present, future. I love the, um, I, I love choice. I love doing choices spreads. If, if you have like, oh, should I date this guy or that guy or this girl or that girl or this, it, you know, is this job, uh, should I take this job or this job? Um, so yeah. Okay. So <laughs> nobody wants any questions. Hold on. Let me see what's going on or have, has any questions. Let's see. Um, okay. Um, okay. So Karen, you have nothing specific. Um, in April, you're asking about Leo aspects. I mean, it really is, uh, you know, you want to monitor the moon. And actually, by the way, not only am I doing this live stream while Mercury's in shadow, but the moon is currently void. <laughs> uh, so funny to me. It's so funny. Um, okay. Um, you really just want to track. It just depends on what's happening so ba based on the question that you're asking, it really just how you want to see what's happening with your rising sign. OK, uh, and obviously your sun sign. Uh, but you do also want to track the moon. Um, obviously, the moon is a quick cycle, but uh, we'll go through Leo a couple of times. Um, but for April, uh, Leo rising, it really is going to be paying attention to um what's happening in Aries for the first half. And then you'll see, you know, for, for Taurus. Um, but yeah, definitely something big in career for you, for sure. Uh, news, something around that. And remember when I say career, when I, that's 10th house and 10th house, it's not just career. It's, it's what you want to be known for, what you're putting all your energy into being known for it. Cause it's fame too. Right. And public recognition, it's honors, achievements, things like that. Okay. Um, Okay, Maha, Taurus. Oh, yeah, that's right. So your birthday is coming up too then. That's great. Happy birthday soon. Uh, my bamboo project launches. When should I launch it? Um, I mm, Give me a time. Give me a set of dates. Should I launch it this or should I launch it this? That's going to, that's what makes it more specific. Yeah. Um, like, should I launch it at this time or should I launch it at this time? Just remember, Maha, Mercury is retrograde, okay? April 1st to the 25th. You don't really want to launch things during Mercury retrograde. You never really want to launch things during Mercury retrograde. Now, I always say, you can, you can, but you might want to wait until Mercury goes direct just to be on the safe side, okay? Um, remember, Mercury's going direct in May. And I just said May is the best. It's like the luckiest month of the year. So should you launch in May? Yes. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me the uh, specifics. Uh, Gino, you asked, is love gonna find me soon? Um Okay, let me see. I can do that one. I mean, if you, mm, I can do that one. So, is love gonna find Chino soon? Yeah, big time. Uh huh. Are you already in a relationship? Are you? Are you already? Are you got. You're actively. I mean, right now, just think about things. Think about things. It seems like you're going to be more. It seems like you want to. Do you want to find love to take care of someone? Is that like a big thing of yours? 
um, because that makes you feel good. Um, I, I'll just show you. I mean, yeah, you have that's great. I mean, you got the two of cups, you got the four of swords, and the queen of pentacles. And the queen of pentacles is love, she's so loved. She has got this nurturing energy about her. I'm feeling that you can even see her hand, unlike the king, her hands under the pentacle. And so she has this quality where she wants to give and, and give and share. But yeah, yeah. Um, it seems like you're really thinking about it right now, uh, especially with that four of swords. And the four of swords, as you may not know, may know, four of swords is actually attributed to Sun and Libra. And Libra has to do with partnerships and relationships, rules, partnerships and relationships. Um, so really think about that. I think that there may be some healing from a former relationship that could be uh, helpful if there was one, if you feel like that. Remember, use this full moon lunar eclipse, okay? In a very spiritual way. Um, okay, so uh, Jen Marie, you asked, does my... Okay, I can... My trigon... Trig... Trigonal... Neuralgia face nerve condition get better okay um i want to just remind you i'm not a doctor i'm not a medical professional um but that is oh uh, shoot hold on oh my gosh this is what happens when i don't eat <laughs> are you in a place so here the first message coming through jen marie is I want you to know that um, I feel like I may have mentioned it. What sign are you? Tell me. I, I forget. Uh, I think you may have mentioned it. You're the double. Are you the double? Uh, hold on. Let me scroll. Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah. You're the double Scorpio. Um, yeah. So um, use this eclipse really put energy out there. I mean, this, so here's the thing. If you are double Scorpio, this, every, if everything that's happening right now for you, all this Aries energy, remember the North Node in Aries, like so much happening in Aries, that rules your sixth house. Sixth house, house is like health and wellness. So uh, you could find a lot of progress and movement and uh, activity right now with that. And you could find a lot of big focus on it, but just remember even after the eclipse and the effect of the eclipse lasts a long time. But remember the North node is actually in your sixth house all year. Okay. So, uh, really, really, uh, more of just knowing that it will. Right. Um, and I wouldn't let it like stress you out or let you, you know, if like worry about it because those are, um, you know, you want to, it's like when we talk about the body or anything related to the body, our body is so sacred and, 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 and we all know that. And sometimes we forget and it's uh, even the emotions that you feel affect your body so much. Right. And, and everything that's where it's where I say it all the time, we're all made of energy. And so you always want to vibrate at this high frequency because it helps your body as well. Because as you know, if you're, let's say stressing about something, you're going to get a headache. If you're nervous and anxious, you, you know, they feel it in your stomach. You do you, it's like your body reacts. So it's really being good to yourself. That really does help uh body too. But anyway, let's, uh, I'll do. Yeah. 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 Let's see. Uh, let's see what the cards got to say. Jen Marie. Okay. Yeah, it's you're in a place where I I want you to just everything that I just said really harness that energy. There is going to be uh it seems like you may be in your head a little too much about it. Um are do you find yourself in your thinking about it a lot? Um I mean you did get strength. Uh queen I mean it's you're working toward it. Okay. I think that if you spend less time thinking about it and worrying about it, you're going to, you're going to be fine because there's that you're going to, it's more like enduring, but 
It's uh, let me just show you. You got it. So we're going from the Queen of Swords to Strength, but then then you got the Five of Swords, uh, and then the Nine of Wands. But this is you know like not giving up. It's like resilience, and then you've got the uh, Eight of Pentacles. Okay, so really, really working toward making these things happen for you and being, you know, very laser focused and really focusing on that. Um, so it really is. Did you, I don't know. Did you respond? Um, oh my goodness. Okay. Let me see. Uh, okay. So do, 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 do. When is the best time to launch it to May? What is best time to launch Maha May 15th? You're a May 15th Taurus. Wait, date is best. For launching, give me a time for Maha. Say, uh, ask me, is it best to launch this project before May 15th or after May 15th? Give me a set of dates. That's what's going to help. Um, okay, where did. Okay, okay. Jen Marie, that's great. Okay. Well, I'm and and I'm I'm putting really great energy out there for you. Okay, I'm putting really great out energy for you. Uh, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Um, okay, we've got it. We got so what happens with seven minutes? Um, okay, so uh, blah, where, blah. Michelle wants to know: Is Mark my forever person? Okay, okay. Is Mark Michelle's forever person? Do you believe he is? If you believe he is, then yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got the hair font and the star. So there you go. Um, Okay, so Okay, so <laughs> Chino, you said no Lala, I've never been with anyone Lala, just a 25 year old looking for someone so special. Well put yourself out there. I just told you some really good day. You gotta put yourself out there, okay? Yeah, you're gonna I, f I feel it. So, um, Carla, you are a Taurus sun, Gemini rising, Cancer moon. Okay. Hello, fellow Gemini rising. Um, okay. So you asked, is love coming back to me this month? Carla, let's see if love is coming back to Carla this month. Um, I think that this month, I think that you may need to work on being a little bit more emotionally stable yourself. Not that I'm not saying that you're not. I'm just saying that maybe that's something that, uh, you may be feeling, it seems like you may have gone through a breakup. Okay. Or, or something that may have been hard for you when it comes to relationships. Okay. So, uh, just know there's only six days left of this month. So, Spend this time healing. You got that Libra. Uh, you got that full moon lunar eclipse that's coming through. Okay. So just, uh, uh, and what are you, so where are you? Are you Taurus and Gemini rising. Okay. All right. So, you know, I do think that's uh, time to really think about that, of healing in that area. If you have been heartbroken before. Okay. Um, I think that there's a point where I think that you need to, really heal. Remember, this is a full moon in Libra. It's, it's a lot of healing here. Essentially, we still got that Pisces energy. So I would do that if you are, you know, with Gemini rising in your fifth house of, of love as well. Okay. There's only a few days left in this month, only a few days left in this month. Um, but it is, it, it's healing right now. I think that's going to be helpful first. Now, um, 
Okay, Jeanette. Oh, you asked. Thank you so much for asking that. That's really sweet of you. Uh, good, good. I actually am going to see them. Uh, it's my dad's birthday this week on the 28th. And so I'm, we're going to, they live in Georgia and, you know, sometimes I just, yeah, if I'm going to go all the way down there, I'm, they want to retire in Florida. So I'm going to help look at places with them, uh, when I go to Florida, uh, this week. And it's not like it's, it's the Gulf coast. So I'm bringing sweaters. <laughs> I wish that it was, but anyway, Oh, Jane, thank you so much. Jen Marie, thank you so much. Y'all are amazing. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Y'all know I do. I really, really appreciate y'all so much. Um, that's so sweet. Um, thank you. Thank you again. And uh, yeah, so things are good and we're looking, we're looking, we're looking. Thank you for asking, Jeanette. Um, Okay, so Karen, you say, I'm waiting for my specific person to find me. Been trying to manifest him for a while. Will I meet him in May? Okay. Um, I think, you know, are you actually... Okay, well, let's see what the cards are. But I'm just saying, if, so the question that you asked, I'm waiting for my specific person to find me. I've been trying to manifest him for a while. But are you taking action for, because maybe there's someone out there waiting for you to find that person. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, I so let's see what the cards say. Okay, will you meet him in May? Will you meet him in May, Karen, or April? <laughs> uh, May or April. All right, Karen, let's see if you will meet your person. All right. Um, uh, Karen, all I got to say is things are looking good for you. Things are looking good for you. Okay. So keep manifesting. Put yourself out there, though. Put yourself out there. Keep. I mean, like, look at this. Come on. You got the Knight of Cups. You know, this, come on, this is the knight in shiny armor. You got the empress cards. This is all about love. You see the symbol of Venus right there in the stone chair. Oh, come on. This is, this is great. So yeah, 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 yeah. The possibilities, the possibilities, Karen. Um, okay. Okay, so Maha, let's get back to you. Is it uh, time your bamboo project launch before or after May? Mm, I love these. I love doing the choices ones. Okay, so let's see. Maha, should you launch your bamboo project before? after may okay so this is gonna be before this is gonna be after okay um oh you are ready to go you're ready to launch this aren't you before after may 15th okay um where'd you go where'd you go before okay so here there you are Ma. okay before May 15th, after May 15th. It looks like after is a better option, okay? It may be that you you, you, something may happen where you feel that that's just like, uh, like really like after May 15th, but it is po likely going to be the better option. Um, you can also launch it before May 15th, but it's definitely going to be you going through a lot of, it may be too soon. It may be too soon. You may be working too hard, but it's still fine. The option's better for after May 15th, 
but just know that there may be something that happens before that could feel a little challenging where you feel like, uh, okay, but, uh, that's why, because <laughs> you did get the five of pentacles. So some things that remember, there's some surprising things that are going to happen, happen with eclipses. So I would, I personally feel after May 15th is better anyway, uh, because there could be a lot of changes that happen before now and May 15th. Okay. Um, with scheduling and stuff like that too, with Mercury retrograde. And again, you just don't want to, but it does look like, I mean, the fact that, you know, it's so funny because, you know, this is you, right? Two of Pentacles. And then you got the three of Pentacles, uh, three of Wands. You just want to go. And then you got the six of Wands. You just want that success in this. Uh, so, okay, cool. May 15th. Y'all, all right. Um, I'm going to take one. I got to go. I got to get Ruby. I know. I know. I got Ruby over here. What? Hold on. I'm going to show you. Ruby. She's ready to go for her W-A-L-K. Ruby, look, who's that? Who's that? Mm. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put her down. Um, let's see. Okay, so, Jean, will my move in May go well? That's right. You're moving. That's right. I love that. Um, okay, so, let me see. Jeans move in may go well. All right, Jean, we're going to find out if your uh, move in May goes well. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You're good. Okay. You're good. You, 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 you're going to be fine. You've been planning this for a while. Uh, you're, you're good. You're good here. You know this, right? You're, you got the nine of cups in your future. Yeah. Um, that is your wish come true that you're good you're good gene it's gonna go very well um okay y'all uh i think that is all for today karen thank you so much thank you thank you for all the anniversary messages um y'all have a wonderful eclipse lunar eclipse and i hope this was helpful for planning for april um and all your questions and uh, definitely take advantage of today, Venus, Sex, on Jupiter. I really love it. Put yourself out there. Put your energy out there. Um, okay. So y'all, thanks so much. Um, and we'll do this again. And uh, I'll put your April readings up this week. Um, and then I'll be back the week after. I think those readings are going to be really short because, again, I'm going to be away with my family all week. So I'm just trying to, I'm still trying to figure out if I ha even have time and I'm sorry. I, have to, I, I, I know I still want to do it, but it's gotta be really like gr on the grind here. So they may be a little bit shorter than normal. Um, but then we, but, but it's a big one though, because it's the eclipse. But I talk about a lot about the eclipse in your, in your monthly forecasts. Um, Okay, y'all, thanks so much, everyone. Yeah, yep, Jeanette, everyone remember April 20th, but thanks so much. Happy Sunday, happy Venus, exile Jupiter, happy uh, full moon lunar eclipse in Libra. Um, thanks so much for being members, y'all are amazing. I'll see you next month. All right, uh, and I'm in throughout, uh, every, throughout the month. Dude. All right, thanks, y'all. All right, have a great weekend. Bye, everybody. Okay, bye-bye.